What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I built this beautiful solid steel stove top handmade Chuddy Tortilla Press. Come on up! A few months back, I released a video all about how to make flour tortillas. In that video, I go into detail about why I built my very own tortilla press and why a heated press works so well. And I gotta say, after a few months of using it, pretty much weekly, I stand by everything I said. That being said, I built this thinking it was gonna be a one-off, something that would be a cool video, but I got an overwhelming amount of DMs, emails, phone calls, text messages, you name it, about people asking me, where's the tortilla press? How much for one? Can you ship it? When's it going on the website? How did you build it? My own mother called me and asked me where the tortilla press build video was. So without any further ado, today is the day that I'm going to answer all of those questions and more. But first, let me show you how to build one. Finally, a saw that cuts clean. Hey, can I borrow that welder? Nice box. All right, so to get things started on this tortilla press, I took some two inch steel channel. That's what this stuff is called. This is some 11 gauge two inch channel and that's the feet of the tortilla press. I like that it's nice and wide so it can sit on any burner or hover over the burner itself, depending on what kind of grates you have on there. And I'm still using the same little flux cord MIG welder, Hobart 140, I believe it's called. It's been going strong for the last few years. Highly recommend it if you can find one. But yeah, it is flux core, so it's a super dirty weld still. Really smoky, sputtery, not too pretty, but with the help of a wire brush or the uh, wire brush angle grinder attachment, cleans up pretty nicely. Just takes a little bit of elbow grease. And this is the base of the tortilla press. So flip this over. The steel I'm using here, this is some uh, 3 16 inch steel plate. Pretty heavy duty, nice and thick, holds heat really well. And this is a 12 by 12 inch square. Simply enough, just called up the metal shop and asked for a whole bunch of 12 inch squares. And not much to it. One thing to keep in mind though is that the metal is not always straight. It tends to warp when they're cutting it or when you're welding it. So it may rock around like this. So it's always a good idea to kind of flip it around and turn it over until you find the best fit. You want that to be as tight as possible. And that's looking pretty good to me. As for hinges, I got these little three inch steel weldable hinges from the metal shop as well. And these are a perfect fit for this application because the pivot point doesn't quite line up with the gap. Nice bead. And because the pivot point isn't directly where the opening is, instead of opening like a book where it's gonna like pinch right there, this way the hinges create a natural gap, which is super convenient because instead of pinching, which would make this side of the tortilla a lot thinner than this side, it comes down a lot more evenly, which is pretty convenient. Now it's time to talk about the handle. You can do pretty much whatever you want for the handle. You could just put a piece of rod or tube right there. That would work just fine. But because it's gonna be so hot and on a burner, I really wanted something more like this that would be a little more heat resistant so you don't burn your hand. But when costing it out, I'm trying to make this as cheap as possible. And if I buy this plus the rod for it, it ends up being way more expensive than it needs to be. But luckily at your local hardware store, you can go and pick up one of these. This is a chipping hammer, which already has a nice handle on it and a rod. And it costs about five bucks. Very nice. Looking good, boys, almost done. Now we gotta put something back here to keep the door from swinging all the way open. You don't really have to, because you're gonna have your hand on it most of the time anyway, but it's a nice little touch. You can use pretty much whatever you want for a backsplash. You could just take a piece of angle iron and put that back there so when it opens up, it's gonna stop. But if you keep it flat like that, it's gonna stop right at a 90 degree and might just tip backwards. We want it to be a little bit further back. If only we had something that was at like a 30 degree angle. Huh, that'll work perfectly. Perfect. <laughs> 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 
Nothing like welding the pain away, am I right? <laughs> I swear I've got a respirator on back here. Very nice. There we have it, fully functioning tortilla press. The only problem is all this mill scale on here. To make this thing food safe and nonstick, we really gotta strip this down to bare steel, which is probably the most annoying part about building a tortilla press. Now we sand for the next 35 minutes. These blue paint removing wheels, they work pretty well too for taking off the scale. All right, look at that, nice and shiny. Looking good. This is also a really good time to just round off your edges and make sure everything is nice and clean and shiny. Now to do this side. There's a snake in my boot. All right, that's a nice cleaned up tortilla press. Let's get it seasoned up. Luckily, getting your tortilla press nice and seasoned could not be easier. Simply just going to get it nice and hot. I like to really let this thing cook on here for a good 30, 40, maybe even an hour just to get everything really hot because when metal gets hot, all the steel wants to separate and kind of realign. This is a great opportunity for everything to kind of come together, get to know itself and settle into its new shape. One concern I have is this top plate wanting to warp because it doesn't have any reinforcement other than the hinges. So what I like to do is just take a little weight here. This is a seven pound weight. I'm just gonna hang it on this. So while everything comes up and gets really hot, if it does want to warp at least it'll warp in the correct shape and stay nice and tight probably an unnecessary step but hey not taking any chances so we're gonna let this cook for the next little bit and we will check back in little bit of beef fat can't go wrong with that about 15 minutes in and as you can see everything is starting to change colors which is a good sign that this thing is getting a nice and hot no warpage yet oh beautiful nice and tight now that's hot we could cook a steak on this thing i think that is good enough so now we are going to start applying our oil to polymerize the oil and get a nice non-stick coat on this thing so again we're basically treating this just like a cast iron pan or a carbon steel wok or something like that what i've got here is some avocado oil anything with a high smoke point will work just fine we're just going to try and put on a nice thin layer and we're going to keep applying coats until it's nice and dark to the top as well Ooh, so clean. But there's plenty of videos out there all about how to properly season a cast iron or carbon steel pan. Gonna let all that oil soak in, cook on. It's gonna fill up all the pores and make this thing nice and oily. Come back in a little bit and do it again. Nice part about oiling this thing all the time is that the hinges are always super smooth. I have a feeling I'm gonna do a smash burger on this thing pretty soon. After a few more coats of oil and letting this thing cool down, we are done. There you have it, folks. The Chuddy Stovetop Tortilla Press. Got a nice smooth finish on there. Cop probably could go a little harder on the top side here, but it'll get there over time. Not much to it. Uh, nice and plump. Maiden voyage. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice and non-stick, can't go wrong with eight. And there you have it folks, that's how I build a tortilla press. Now to answer the question of do I sell this, do I ship this, is it on my website, and all the other questions I get asked on the daily. Since I'm pretty new to Q and A's, I decided to ask y'all on Instagram for specific questions. I posted a story saying, ask me anything. And there was most certainly a lot of questions. Let's go back to the beginning. Do you have days off? No, no I don't. It kind of falls into a gray area. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, but I love what I do, yet I work every day. Still a year wait time, yes. 
at least. Right now I'm saying 15 months. At the time I'm making this video, I have about 43 smokers on order. That's both sizes of offset and both sizes of chud box. And as you've seen, the shop is just my garage with me and Miles out there with one welder, two angle grinders, and a chop saw. So if you want to get a chud pit, you have to be patient. And I do appreciate all 43 of you for signing up for that long of a wait. Can you send a chud pit to Mexico? No, I cannot. Again, it's a very small operation at this time, so shipping is not an option for us at the moment. But hopefully by the end of next year or sometime in the future, I'll be able to figure that out. How many cookers do you build monthly? Usually between three and four, depending on the smoker. The offsets take a lot longer to build than the mini chud box does, for example, so depends on the build schedule. Got any mini chud boxes on hand? No, I wish I did. Hopefully someday I'll have an inventory, but right now I'm in a bit of a deficit and uh, I too want a mini chud box. The one I've got is the prototype version and I want the new one really badly, but I got away just like the rest of y'all. I'd love to see your backyard table. Yes, everyone always asks me about this table. This is a one of a kind that I built and I'm thinking about doing a year end gear review where I talk about this table, this burner, that smoker, everything I use in the shop and probably do another Q and A. There's a lot of questions on here that I wanna answer that I'm not gonna get to today. So stay tuned on my Instagram for when I ask another, ask me anything and uh, we'll talk about all the gear I use and everything like that. So end of the year, couple weeks. Do you foresee your lead time going down? Now that I've got Miles helping me weld in there, yes, we are gonna start knocking out mini chud boxes in the beginning of the year. We've got about 20 of those on order and those are pretty quick builds. So hopefully in the next few months, you'll see the lead time drop down a bit. How can I get a chud pit? Go to chudsbbq.com. Do you do modifications to a 500 gallon trailer set? No, I've kind of learned my lesson the hard way about trying to fix other people's pits. It's a lot messier than it needs to be. And uh, nowadays I just stick to building them from scratch. How did you get into welding? Y'all should head over to Kevin's BBQ Joints. He's got a podcast and a YouTube channel. He did an interview with me a couple months back where we talk all about how I got into welding, how I got into cooking, how I got into barbecue in general. And if you want to know more about my lifestyle, you should definitely check that video out. How does your old lady let you get away with the garage like that. I had the garage before the old lady, so I'm grandfathered in. When is the tortilla press video going up? How much for tortilla press? Are you going to sell the tortilla press? All right, so as I said, we've got quite a lead time on smokers already. And when I built the original tortilla press, I didn't expect so many people to want it. And it just didn't seem right to put a tortilla press on a two year wait list. That being said, it's a pretty quick build and I can see the demand is there. So I will be putting it up on my website today. And old Cockburn and I will do our damnedest to build as many as we can. Are you ready to start building tortilla presses? Probably figure it out. Yeah. You're posting a video about it though, right? Mm, no, no, not <laughs> that it's supposed to be on. Yeah, it's, I'm just cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was just telling the folks here about how you're helping me out in the welding shop, trying to get that wait list down, how we got about 40 some odd smokers to build, and now we're taking on tortilla presses. How does it make you feel? Bring it on. <laughs> that being said, I don't plan on building any tortilla presses this year. We're going to finish out this year with all the uh, pits we've got in the shop right now. And come January, we'll start pumping these out. As far as wait times are concerned, I'm not really sure. It's always a guess depending on our build schedule. But like I said, it's a pretty quick build. So as long as you guys bear with us on the timeline, we'll do our best to pump them out. It really depends on how much Miller Lite I drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go pick that up. <laughs> are Bonito fish big? Yeah, well, bonito fish are what's considered a trophy fish, so yeah, they're pretty big. I actually got that question twice in a row. Maddie Fab and Barstool Jordy, similar minds. When are you gonna start selling shirts? It's on the to-do list. Have you started using gas for welding yet? Again, it's on the to-do list. More videos on the to-do list. One more. More videos about your builds, done. Do your neighbors care about the metal shop? Yes and no. They definitely don't like it, but they're very supportive. Except for Carl. Uh, there's about 15 questions on here all asking about my fire management techniques. There is a fire management video coming soon. Stay tuned. Again, guys, thank you for all these questions. There's so many in here I really want to answer, but I don't want this video to be as long as my last video. That being said, I'm going to call it a night, but stay tuned for the next video in a few weeks where I'm going to do another Q&A where I plan to answer many more questions. Until then, head over to chudsbbq.com to get the price on this 25-pound solid steel tortilla press. Thank you to everyone for supporting me during the making of this video. We just hit 20K followers.
And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all so much for all the support you've given me. 20K was my end year goal and we got there a month early and I couldn't be more thankful for everything you guys say. It's probably the most positive comment section on YouTube. And as long as you keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Also, thank you for all the supporters that are on the Patreon as well. If you didn't know, I make another video every week with Leroy and Lewis on a Leroy and Lewis Patreon where we're doing really cool stuff. It's all at the food truck in the commissary kitchen. Totally different vibe than here. But with all that said, Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. The best way to support the channel, get these shipping, get the pit building out of the garage and all that stuff is to just subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll continue on this chuddy journey together. But head over to chudsbarbecue.com for all pit building information, yada, yada, yada. And until the next time I see you, please go cook or weld something outside. Peace. Hey,